Hey everyone, welcome back to Peaceful Growth uh, Podcast. Uh, our today's guest is Vishal Kothari. He is a uh, founder and CEO of uh, Tai Chi Software. Welcome, Vishal. Hi, hi Anil. Hi everyone. How are you doing? Doing great. Doing great. Uh, we were just talking, and uh, uh, you know, on uh, before that, it has been such a long time that we both are uh, finally connected. Though we actually have. We have shared history, you know. You and I, we worked uh, and uh, together as a team, and yeah. uh, you were my reporting manager. So it was really interesting uh, to kind of like work with you. Like, it was how long? It was like fourteen, fifteen years ago, right? Yeah, two thousand six, seven, uh, around seven, eight, something around that. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, that's a long. Right. And look at that! Like fifteen years later, we both are entrepreneur. Right. and uh, come to this podcast <laughs> absolutely yeah you know it's it's amazing now that i think of it it was a new new branch that we were setting up in ahmedabad mm -hmm. you were part of the new team i believe you were one of the senior developers that we had uh, and a team of about what 10 people so so it, it was pretty new for me as well to come to a new city establish a uh, a new branch and deal with a completely different team you know, uh, in a new city, new people, but that was fun, and yeah, you know, it was it was great working uh, together. Yeah, in fact, one of um, actually my first encounter with WordPress, like you know, was uh, during that time when oh. uh, I was working in Magnet. If you remember, Rinita Malhotra, yeah, know, they, she had a website on I think Drupal oh, or something, yeah. and we converted into the WordPress, and that oh, was yeah. my first. WordPress project. Right, Vinita Madhura. We we happen to talk, you know, maybe once a year even now. But yeah. I, I did not, you know, uh, think that that was the first experience with WordPress. Uh, that's fascinating. Yeah, yeah, I know. So it's interesting that how, like, uh, around that time, and it was also, I think, beginning of the WordPress in like absolutely WordPress came up, and WordPress was just getting more. Uh, popularity, but there were like right. other CMS, Drupal, and a bunch of right. other which were popular. Uh, but yeah, uh, that was really great, actually, opportunity for me to, uh, you know, give a hands on experience with WordPress. And yeah. that basically eventually opened up a lot of different uh, opportunities and ended up becoming one of the, the WordPress agency, you know, creating a WordPress agency yeah. and uh, WordPress product businesses. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's fascinating history. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, Vishal, um, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself, your journey to Tai Chi Software? Um, like, how, what was the journey, struggle, anything that you would like to add there? Right. So, we started back in 2012. I was coming on the back of a failed venture, uh, you know, where we tried to build a Interesting, you know, we tried to build a WordPress like solution for the diamond and jewelry market. We were fascinated with plugins, you know, with how WordPress works that okay, you activate something, and when you deactivate, it's gone. And when you activate, you know, you bring the functionality of that thing. So we said that why not build a similar platform for the diamond and jewelry uh, industry? Uh, that's That's where most of my family comes from. And uh, me, along with a partner, we thought that let's see, let's try to build this one and see how it goes. Uh, that did not work out so well. We tried for about two, two and a half years. And after that, uh, you know, we decided to kind of shut that down. And then I actually started looking for a job in 2011 end uh, as to, you know, uh, what so you know what what to do next i was just wondering about that and that's when i came across wordpress you know in a in a more serious way that you know okay something can be done even within wordpress uh before that you know as you have talked that we have worked together in in the same company magnet so i started my journey actually in 2004 and i was there with magnet for five years uh and I have done virtually everything right from programming, business development, uh, leading different teams uh, across technologies. But I started as a programmer, so I am not a born marketer, you know, to to put it in that way. 
technicals is what I started with. And then in 2012, I started building this WordPress plugins. Uh, along with that, I was also working for the US client. So the idea was that if the the client work did not you know did not uh, succeed then i would have the plugins and if the plugins did not work well i would have the client work you know so there was something to bank upon uh, and that was very important because i was coming on the back of a venture which did not go so well so it was important for me to make sure that uh, uh, you know we are uh, that i am doing something which you know which kind of works and which brings in the uh, the necessary money at that point that was the uh, the most important thing so that's that's how i started uh, i started building like one plugin uh, and eventually we now have about 12 plugins uh, over the last uh, 11 years so so yeah uh, that's that's more or less you know how uh, yeah, you know how we started. And what uh, some of these plugins do, if you can tell a little bit about. Sure. Them. So all yeah, our plugins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all our plugins uh, are based on or are for WooCommerce. So they work on top of WordPress and WooCommerce. Uh, so e-commerce is the primary uh, niche that we have been focusing on in the last uh, decade. One of the three of our most popular plugins are one is a booking and appointment plugin. So it allows you to sell your time, you know, book appointments, uh, book classes for your students, or let's say book tickets for the theme park, uh, you know, uh, anything that you can imagine to do with, uh, with dates and times. You could even rent out your villas, your vacation homes, uh so it has a variety of use cases that is one of the uh, popular plugins then we have abandoned is it the one uh, which is the biggest one in terms of the revenue and uh, so in downloads? terms of revenues no uh the the yeah the the biggest one is order delivery date uh okay. so it sounds simple that it puts a date and time picker on the checkout page for woocommerce websites allowing the customer to choose a delivery date and time, uh, but it gives the store owner uh, a hell lot of control, uh, like integrating with different shipping methods or uh, having different delivery schedules for different uh, postcodes. Let's say you uh, you know you ship to California only on Fridays, but you are able to ship to New York you know on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. So depending on the uh, address of the customer, it automatically shows that delivery uh, date. Uh, we integrate with uh, UPS, USPS, FedEx, and all of that. Uh, the the store owners can have delivery charges. So you could say that you know if you want a delivery on a Saturday, I'll charge ten dollars more. Uh, or if you want the delivery close to or on Mother's Day or Father's Day, then we'll charge you slightly more. So uh, that has been one of our best selling plugins. Uh, and we did not expect that to be, you know, uh, honestly. I was going to ask that because as a uh, yeah. plugin business owner or plugin yeah. developer in general, yeah. you know, there, I've seen that like a big contrast that as a founder or a developer, the plugin that you're most excited about the plugin that you know you are like feel like okay now this is the one of the best work i've done versus the plugin which actually makes the more revenue i've seen always you know there is a difference between that is, that, is it yeah. the same for you for you too yeah so the, it, it has been the same for us we did not definitely expect this to be number one but mm -hmm. we realized the the different use cases that it helps with and mainly uh, it helps the store owner to get rid of the constant phone calls that, you know, my order has not been delivered. Where is it? You know, or, mm -hmm. you know, you have done the delivery, but I am not in the house. You know, can you reschedule? Uh, so these things, people, our customers, they started telling us that, you know, it is helping them a lot to streamline all the all their delivery operations. Uh, 
and we have seen so many different use cases and particularly for stores that are selling perishable items like uh, flowers uh, bakery products uh, any kind of food one of our customers is even selling underground reptiles you know to as uh, for pets you know to to keep them mm. as pets you know they are selling underground reptiles and even mm. they were using our uh, uh, the order delivery date plugin because for mm. them shipping was very important yeah. so for businesses where shipping is like very uh, important local or national deliveries that is where the plugin comes in very uh, handy and it allows mm. us to uh, to to get rid of all the emails and phone calls that keep on coming and dis distracting them for you know that where is my delivery where is my order mm. you know, those kind of things yeah. yeah no that's a really interesting problem uh, that uh, you're solving with and also i'm this is one thing that I noticed through all the plugins where, you know, that you can find in WooCommerce or Shopify, mm -hmm. that usually we see a workflow, e-commerce workflow, where it's like, oh, you had a product and you have a shipping and then you see put a discount code, check out and uh, end up the, the process. But right. then there are a lot of uh, small, uh, medium uh, business owners. They have a very unique workflows, you know, what you mentioned about, like they want yeah. to ship on new york on certain days they want to they want to like have a different yeah. discount process and we don't realize that but yeah like there are so many that li little custom workflows that the plugin is like uh you know the your company is building my company is building kind of like yeah. help and fill that gap right so so i agree yeah yeah we don't because you know we are not running an actual store that's where the problem lies that we are at times we are unable to understand the uh, mm. the actual value that our products are providing you know yeah we can build something we build something we know the customers are liking it but the real value we can gauge only when you know we are selling something physical you know that's yeah. that's in my bucket list also that i want to build a uh, build a store you know selling something physical you're in india using woocommerce using all our plugins Mm -hmm. And you know, that is when we will also come to know the actual problems, uh, yeah, with the bugs and everything. You know how they are uh, using it, and yeah, what what kind exactly. of challenges they face. It. Yeah, yeah it's interesting. Uh, a multi collab uh, plugin that that I told you uh, right before yeah. uh, this podcast. That so when we built it, um, we built it for one of our client, and oh. then we we converted it to a product. Um, mm -hmm. The first few months, first six months, actually, we didn't actually use it internally, and. Oh. Uh, we just kept shipping it, and then uh, six months later, mm -hmm. um, we thought like, this is a plugin that helping people publish faster. But on the other side, we we itself like we ourselves also write a lot of content on multi mm -hmm. dots, multi collab, and dot store all of our three brands. Um, so then, uh, yeah, we started. We installed the plugin, and now we are kind of collaborating internally with our content okay. writers, SEO team myself and a lot of different people right. and every time i use it i'll find something i was like oh i, I didn't like this part uh right. this part is something that we should change it so right. that actually become a, a really interesting way to kind of improve the product and see Absolutely. actually that how our uh, end customers or users interact with our product so you have to try it on yourself too yeah that's the you have to. In fact, you know, me and my content lead were just discussing about purchasing multi collab last month. Uh, you know, he because now we we are just restarting our content efforts uh, since the last three months, and we realized a lot of back and forth was happening with the writers, and that's when uh, you know. So typically, you know, uh, when the need arises, we don't actually remember. Okay, you know, that multi dots already has such this thing called multi collab. But then right. my content lead came in and he was like, you know, that, you know, there is this product called multi collab. You know, we could use that. I was like, mm. oh my God, oh, uh, we know them already. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, you know, uh, we are yet to purchase it, but, but you know, uh, that's, that's already on our uh, plans. Mm. Let's, let's now get it because it is uh, helpful when you have two to three different members who are writing content. And you know you are interacting on a daily basis with them, uh, providing feedback and so on. Yeah. No, I would love, love uh, for you, you and your team to try multi collab yeah. and also 
uh, share any feedback, anything that you find Absolutely. that you know we can make it better. Um, yeah. Now let's move to the the idea. You know, so the plugin that you mentioned about that is highest uh, revenue uh, yeah. generating plugin. How the idea came in? Was it something that one of your client asked you or one of your team member? Like how that idea of developing that right. plugin comes out? Uh, so we started in two thousand twelve. Uh, and at that time, WP e-commerce was the e-commerce plugin for WordPress, which was most popular. WooCommerce yeah. had just kind of, you know, released. But WP e-commerce, there was a plugin named WP e-commerce. And that was the de facto e-commerce plugin for WordPress. And uh, we built our first two, three extensions for WP e-commerce. And then we realized that people were asking that, do you have a WooCommerce version of that? So, uh, and the request started coming in. And how did we build? So I used to, you can see, read the uh, the support forums of these plugins, that what are the people asking? Uh, mm -hmm. I used to, the uh, WooCommerce.com had an ideas board, you know, or the, uh, a features board uh, where people used to uh, put in their ideas that can I have delivery date functionality with WooCommerce? Can I have bookings functionality with WooCommerce? And then they used to vote for it and people used to comment on it. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so when going through the support forums of, of WP e commerce, that is when I realized that someone asked for uh, a delivery date functionality with uh, WP e-commerce and it was a simple tool at that time uh, so put a date picker on the checkout page uh, allow them to enable or disable a few weekdays and allow them to set a max limit that you know they can deliver let's say 10 orders on Mondays uh, you know uh, they can deliver maybe 50 orders on a Friday so that is how it started this was the only like source you know where I used to read uh, and, and get ideas from, of course, you know, some projects which were larger, you know, we took up a bit later, but this one seemed like something that could be done, you know, maybe in a week. And uh, we released the free version of the plugin and then we kept on iterating. So, uh, so yeah, reading the support forums and the WooCommerce ideas board gave us our first uh, plugins actually. Hmm. That's very smart, actually. Yeah, because um, other than just creating the random plugins that yeah. you think like, oh, wow, this is this game, this is gonna be yeah. be a big hit. You know, you're actually listening to customers' feedback, customers exactly, uh, not just to maybe necessarily your customers, but in general, people who yeah. have the actual e-commerce business, exactly. they are already telling you right, like what they uh, are, yeah. what kind of th features they want. They want. So, yeah, exactly. you just go there and find out. Yeah. yeah, you just need to keep looking, you know, for what people mm -hmm. are asking, basically. Otherwise, uh, uh, yeah, you know, because we don't have, we don't run an e-commerce store, we don't really know what do customers yeah. need. So hearing from them is the best possible way to build it. And uh, where then we started selling this plugin for $9. So it was the pro version. We started selling for $9. And the free version, of course, was free on WordPress.org. Uh, mm -hmm. And now we are selling that plugin for one forty nine dollars. So mm -hmm. that's the journey it has, you know, uh, been through from nine yeah. to one forty nine. Mm. And did it change? Like, how did you process that change? Because a lot of guests that I was talking to uh, uh, on recording and 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 off offline, uh, one thing regarding the price, like how to price your WordPress plugin. Mm -hmm. um, they're like mixed opinions, you know, and there is also uh, people have this fear that, oh, if I charge too much, then I'll lose the customer. If you charge yeah. uh, less, then you are, you know, uh, leaving the, the money off the yeah. table. So, yeah, like how did you process that decision of moving from 9 to 149 and how it worked right. out for so, you? So what we did was we, uh, at every point, once we thought that, you know, we have now added good amount of features or we have now let's say added this this one feature which is like very important you know where we were hearing from customers so that is when we thought that okay let's increase from 9 to 19 then let's go to 29 then let's go to 49 and so on uh 
so it you know we always were very conscious that we don't want to overcharge you know because as you said there is always this fear that what if people don't purchase if you mm. increase the price and what if they stop purchasing uh so so at that time those fears were there and that is why the increments were very small so 9 to 19 29 49 and then at uh, you know once we reach 49 dollars with then the next jump was 99 dollars so then we uh, you know and of course it was because we added a couple of major features you know to the plugin uh, which for example as i said would allow to set different delivery schedules depending on different uh, criteria like let's say you offer a category a for which you have a certain set of delivery rules and for products of category b you have a different set of delivery rules uh, uh, so those kind of advanced features uh, we added and uh, and that is when we were also able to convincingly tell the clients that this is why you know we are uh, charging this much and not just the product but the quality of the customer service that we have offered has always been uh, mm. you know top notch uh, like yeah you know this is one thing that people have our customers have regularly told us that we are even better than some of the big guys within the wordpress uh, mm. uh, in terms of customer support so customer support and we have had a dedicated team for customer support all along uh, you know in many companies we see that the developers handle customer support for a few hours mm -hmm. uh, i believe that is good only for a temporary period so that the developers right. get to know the customers mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, otherwise it is a bit distracting because you know for mm -hmm. the developer like they are born to create you know they are not born to reply to customers uh, mm -hmm. and the customer support guys you know we like the team we had we have always made sure that they they only do customer support and nothing else and that is why we were able to provide a uh, you know a good quality of customer service uh, to our team members so customer service uh, addition of regular uh, uh, important features to the product and maintaining the quality of the code as well one of the companies based in bulgaria whom we partnered with in 2016 uh, you know we had to rebuild our whole website uh so i'm talking about devrix uh, mario okay. pesh mm -hmm. uh, so they had this criteria that they would make sure to screen you know their clients basically they did not mm -hmm. just take anyone so they right. saw our products they saw the code and everything and their first reaction was that you know your code quality is pretty decent uh mm -hmm. they were not expecting that uh, uh because coming from the asian subcontinent you know maybe that's mm -hmm. an that we as a collective need to improve but mm. they were not expecting the code quality to be uh, you know to be of good quality right and that's when it, it felt satisfying that okay you know we are doing something right uh, mm. so so yeah you know this focus on quality is uh, is something that has helped us to make sure that we are able to charge prices that are maybe higher than our competitors mm. uh, but we then make sure that we are delivering the value uh, you know in in all aspects when we charge those prices right yeah so big takeaways are um, do incremental don't jump right second okay. is continue to also increase the your value ladder when you're increasing the price so more yeah. features more quality better customer support um and uh, yeah in general like you know just also keep checking with the competition as well that where the competition is and it's okay to right. a little bit high but as long as yeah. you you know you, you have the right reasons to support your pricing yeah. uh yeah no that all makes sense and uh, so Vishal, the next question is um how big is tai chi software at this moment in terms of the number of clients installs revenues anything that uh, uh, will help us understand the uh the size and the current state of tai chi software sure so uh uh, we started in 2012 so it's been roughly 11 years or so uh, to us uh, we have about 200000 active installs uh, okay. of our free plugins the number of customers who have purchased from us is about 27 28000 so 
that's like you know the, the number of licenses which uh, uh, which we have sold hmm. uh, in terms of the revenues we have not been able to breach the 1 million mark so uh, so that is where we are uh, aiming next you know that uh, we want to reach that uh, milestone uh, yeah. uh, of 1 million dollars uh, a year Mm. Uh, that's something which we we are now working towards yeah. and uh what else uh we so we have served some big uh you know you can say names like intercontinental hotel singapore they mm. were using order delivery date plugin for you know uh, uh for their own website uh, uh, of the hotel then there is a food delivery company in spain in spain named as tapers uh, so they are one of the largest food delivery companies in Spain. They have also used, uh, they have been using the uh, delivery date plugin. Uh, Marx and Spencer were also using our plugin at one point of time. Uh, That's a big brand, so, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so there have been a few, uh, uh, yeah, a few such uh, names uh, which we are, yeah, you know, proud of. Mm -hmm. And also with uh, with as you mentioned that you have a team of somewhere around uh, how big is your team? So we are about seventeen to eighteen people. Seventeen to eighteen, right? Yeah, seventeen yeah. to eighteen. Let's say we have about eight uh, developers. We mm -hmm. have uh, four to five customer support uh, uh, team members. Then we have three content writers, one person in the testing team one person based in in la who is handling the pre-sales call support mm -hmm. uh so so yeah it's it's basically 17 to 18 people that we have makes sense um so now black friday cyber monday all of that is uh coming up in in next few weeks right uh so yeah what are your just in general view about uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals, and have you done that in the past? And how it worked out? Worked out for you? Right. So we have we we always do uh, Halloween, uh, Black Friday, and Cyber Monday. That is, okay. uh, th those are, the, are the only three, three like uh, big deals yeah. that you do. Or okay. so those are the three that we have now settled on. Earlier mm -hmm. we have done, let's say, Easter sale. Then we have done the Fourth of July sale. Uh, mm -hmm. anniversary sale and so on mm -hmm. and then I, I I kind of felt it was becoming a bit recurring you know uh, mm -hmm. uh, so one of the reasons was also that every time you have to prepare for such sales you have to mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know you you have to make sure that the customers who just purchase a day before the sale they will come back to you that you know hey i just purchased yesterday and now you're offering a 30 percent discount you know can you give me that mm -hmm. discount yeah uh, so so that's one thing which used to happen and then at one point i felt that you know uh, we believe in our products in the quality uh, then why should we be offering sales for you know like almost you know once every month uh, I felt as if, you know, we were not doing the right thing by running a sale every month or maybe every two months. And that's when we uh, decided that, you know, let us focus only on the most uh, big uh, sales event throughout the year. And those are Halloween, Thanksgiving and uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So that's the only sales we, we do now. We don't do any other sales like even on Christmas or Easter or anywhere else. Uh, and I believe uh, uh, that's, I think that's a good way to go uh, because, yeah, you know, as I said, if uh, like I, I firmly believe in the pricing and in the quality of products that we mm -hmm. have and, uh, you know, uh, if that's the case, then, you know, doing too much of sales kind of dilutes the the big sales, you know, when they come. So then right. you, uh, you know, like when we know our customers know that we are only offering three uh, or two mm. sales in a year, then, you know, they will take us seriously and they will make the most of it during those periods. Mm. So, so, so that's how we have done. Typically what we do for black, for, uh, for, for let's say Halloween and 
both you know black friday cyber monday is halloween is a slightly lower discount uh, uh, and uh, black friday cyber monday thanksgiving that's a, a slightly bigger discount which we offer uh, mm -hmm. halloween is roughly 30% off that we give and mm -hmm. uh, thanksgiving we have about 40% off uh, because you know thanksgiving is like more bigger you know uh, uh, as compared to uh, halloween right so so that's what we do uh once we offer lifetime licenses like mm. for limited number of licenses we we opened up during you know one of these periods but uh, since then we have not done lifetime licenses again uh yeah. you know so although the money is good for the short term but mm. uh, but yeah you know i don't think it it helps uh to do the lifetime licenses, particularly because our products are are not like utility products, you know. For example, mm -hmm. uh, let's say export to CSV. Now, export to CSV is something which you might not want to renew, but mm -hmm. it's not something that you need like every day. It might be like exactly. once in a year, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. But let's mm -hmm. say booking an appointment or order delivery mm -hmm. date or cart abandonment; those are yeah. things which are like there for every order that you receive so you know so you will uh, uh, want to renew for those products so that's when we uh, we thought that okay let's not offer lifetime licenses anymore and uh, yeah you know we have not uh, uh, done that since at least three years hmm. but typically yeah what else do we do for black friday and all we we make I have one question vishal on yeah. the uh, discount you mentioned um a 30 percent you try 30 percent for halloween 40 percent for cyber monday thanksgiving and all that in terms of like how did you land to that 30 or 40 percent is that something that you experimented with like multiple different uh discount right. or that was something that you found was a uh, standard right. in the market so uh not not necessarily we compared it with what was being offered but we thought mm -hmm. of it as let's say this is you know, typically, uh, ten percent, fifteen percent, is something which we offer on a regular basis via modes like cart abandonment. You know, right. or let's say a customer comes up on chat and you know they say that they, you know, they want a discount uh, for whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Then we we would right. say okay, let's give you ten percent. You know, mm -hmm. uh, for for Halloween and and uh, the Cyber Monday, thirty and forty, like you know. Uh, we have offered twenty five percent also, but we we realize that thirty is like a mental you know figure, uh, mm. like okay you know percent discount as compared to twenty or twenty five. Uh, I thought you know thirty is like a significant number to to pull in uh, uh, the customer, and mm. uh, you know when we also compared it with in terms of value. So let's say mm -hmm. uh, uh, if we are selling uh, a product for one forty nine dollars, and if we give a thirty percent discount, it comes to roughly about hundred dollars. Uh, mm -hmm. So that you know, kind of uh, it it helps. I feel like them, they get a good deal out of it. Yeah, exactly. It helps them make a good deal out of it. Mm -hmm. And Thanksgiving, we always have kept it bigger than the Halloween. That was the. Mm -hmm. Is you know that if Halloween is yeah. twenty five, Thanksgiving has to be thirty five. If Halloween mm. is thirty, Thanksgiving has to be forty because it is a bigger event. Uh, mm. And we have heard of how uh, how big it is, you know, back in the U.S. and other countries where you yeah. know everything is on sale. Yeah. So you know, why not? Uh, mm -hmm. and people, a lot of people actually have observed that now, especially in these two months. You know, they will hold on. Uh, exactly. to whatever that purchase they're going to make yeah. because then they're like, oh, I'll buy. And actually, they all have a shopping list, you know, like a virtual shopping oh. list. Every product they want to buy right. uh, in a, in a, in whatever, like, you know, they have, right. however they are managing the browser right. market, list, but they will start making their shopping list. Even that also oh. applies to the softwares and tools. They're like, oh, I need this software, but I'm going to wait for, let's say, a month or, or a month and a half. Uh, right. In fact, I also have a shopping list. I have a bunch of things that I want to buy. You know, I already have created a list, <laughs> and I'm holding on to that for the next month. You know, and uh, because yeah, yeah you, you, I'll get a good, good deal out of it. Yeah, good deal. Exactly. So, so 
so that was the logic that you know when everyone mm -hmm. who, who is our main target audience you know based in us uk europe you know when they are uh, uh used to this these discounts this big discounts yeah. during those times then we cannot give a 15% or 20% discount you know it has mm -hmm. to be more you know uh, it has to be more so do you have any do you have any tips for uh, let's say someone who has never done um like for, or someone who is just a new product wordpress product uh, business or plugin you know and they have not done black friday cyber monday or halloween deal in the past and they are mm. trying to do first time what kind of advice mm. or tips do you have for them to be successful with that good question okay so uh so so try to create bundles if you have multiple products try to see uh, which two products you know are being used together by your own customers or which two products seem like a logical fit uh, for example yeah. we have a deposits plugin also and we have seen that people use the booking and appointment plugin and deposits plugin together quite often so then we uh, you know we create a bundle uh, of of such products and then we a bundle is always you know uh, uh, slightly uh, lower priced when you combine both the products and then mm. on top of that you also give a sale discount so it becomes like a, a a big deal you know for the customer so one is to create the bundles second is uh, you know if you are keep like keep the sale for i would say at least 4 to 5 days or you know 6 days because you cannot expect people to keep like a sale for two days and then you cannot expect that everyone would buy in just in those two days um, mm -hmm. you know keep the sale for a slightly longer period uh, mm -hmm. and what has worked for us don't keep the sale too often uh, like you mm -hmm. know if you are keeping the sale every every month then then maybe you know that won't have a very big impact on your customers Correct. Yeah. Right. So you make sure everything on your site is working fine. You know, because mm -hmm. things can go wrong during the uh, during the times when we don't expect them to. So so you know, uh, yeah. You know, prepare your team or prepare your store accordingly for that. Uh, you know, maybe increase the hosting uh, for those couple of weeks. You know, increase the hosting package to a higher CPU. Mm. You know, uh, that's that's one thing which which at times also can go wrong mm. so yeah i think that's that should be uh, uh that should form a good base for anyone who has not done it so far yeah no those are really great advice especially creating a bundle you know so make sure that so that your overall uh, transaction value looks bigger but also the discount uh, up on the top of the discount when they get it then you will get out uh, multiple products uh, keeping it for one week i think that makes sense because uh, i have noticed that too that uh, during especially during thanksgiving people are busy you know celebrating with the family and and like you know doing the other like retail shoppings and all that so i have seen that people usually after the the thanksgiving or uh, the black friday you know then on the weekend or the cyber monday after that like you know that's where they kind of like have a little bit more time uh, spending with family and all and that's where i've seen people also look go and uh, now let me see um, what other stuff that i want to buy so yeah, it makes sense to keep it open for one week that's it yeah and then, one last point i was talking about was make sure that the email marketing tool that you are using mm -hmm. is you know doing like it is delivering to the inbox and uh, yeah, you know, just use a tool which is like stable. Like we have had two multiple iterations, you know, of email marketing tools, one tool after the other, and mm -hmm. it, that can take a like take a toll on the store owner. That you mm -hmm. know, none of the tools are working. So what do we do? Uh, yeah. So what were the so, tools that didn't work? Which are the email software that you are using that didn't work in the past? So we we have tried Mailchimp, we have tried uh, Drip, we have tried Send in Blue. Uh, mm -hmm. All all of them had some or the other uh, issue. So uh, Mailchimp and Drip 
for example they were not that intuitive and uh yeah it was a little bit of a pain to always you know uh, set mm -hmm. up and and send the emails uh then in terms of when we started using send in blue the uh, we were not happy with the uh, you know deliveries that were happening because uh not all of them were going into the inbox mm. and uh last what we did was we separated the email marketing tool and the email delivery tool so now for email delivery we are using a combination of amazon scs and mailgun and mm -hmm. for email marketing we are using funnel kit so funnel kit has been uh, uh, you know a good replacement for us uh, and then separating the email delivery part you know uh, to amazon and uh, mailgun uh, that that has worked well for us so mm -hmm. yeah that's something which could be done yeah no i'm glad that you mentioned that vishal because a uh, lot of uh, entrepreneurs especially the wordpress entrepreneurs yeah they struggle with finding the right kind of tool and especially someone like you who has already tried multiple and the tool when you sign up for that you know uh, at that moment it may work but then we really have to time taste with all these different uh, situations like uh, you mentioned right. like you know, all the different deals and like how it performs on the busy season right. how it performs in the right. less right. uh, uh, yeah busy season um so yep. that leads me to the next question that as an entrepreneur you know we all get a lot of these new ideas like you know new ideas and and new tools um and there is a term for that a shiny object syndrome right <laughs> so yeah, how yeah so how do you process an idea or an opportunity or a recommendation and uh, in order to measure whether that's really good opportunity where you should put your time and energy and your team's time and energy or that's a shiny object right so uh, you know like you mentioned about not creating a new product in the last you know couple of years similarly for us we also have not done a new product for the last uh, you know 3 to 4 years now we have always been uh, yeah you know we have always been updating our existing products and focusing on the customer service and so on uh but now like like you know uh, this last monthly team meeting that we had we we have kind of put in a plan where we are uh, putting in a new team to you know to take care of the existing products and the current team will move on to some new product ideas that we have uh so so it is hard uh, uh you know uh, to to build new products from the same team unless you have a super duper smart you know a technic tech uh, tech savvy team uh, a technical lead in place you know uh, the right marketing team and so on uh, but if that's not the case then you know it takes a little bit of uh, of a time to to execute the ideas that you have in mind and uh what what i have realized is we'll need to start with something small so uh, yeah. rather than taking up a, a big product uh, you know we'll need to we'll need to release let's say two or three smaller products to get into that mode of you know uh, of okay you know we are releasing something new every month now mm -hmm. let's take the big leap you know uh so that is one thing which we have uh, kind of agreed upon internally that let's release a couple of new products which are slightly smaller you know maybe mm. uh, weeks four weeks of development time and we put it out uh, and then we we go for the the big one but as a product uh, company i believe we have to be doing new products uh, you know periodically otherwise mm -hmm. uh we kind of tend to uh, fall behind a bit uh you know if you are not doing new uh because you know we are selling plugins for woocommerce at mm -hmm. you know at the end and there is only a certain limit to it uh so we are very clear that we don't want to do anything and everything on woocommerce like you know if there is something like woocommerce subscriptions 
which is you know doing well which is a good product then we don't want to build another woocommerce subscriptions uh, right. it's 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 easy to do that in the sense you know uh, but then you should have the conviction that a product actually requires focus it requires to study the uh, that particular you know module which you are building mm. so you have to know the subscriptions in and out if you are building something on that uh yeah. so don't build a new product just you know because you can do in the open source world if you are really convinced about that then go all in and uh yeah you know it's it's a it's it's a difficult task to to be building new products uh mm. periodically like every quarter or every six months but i believe that is the only way you know where we as product owners are able to kind of build a a web of different products that are talking to each other that are helping each other market and that are also solving a particular need you know which is the most important thing uh, so yeah i am not sure if if that kind of helps uh, the the audience but uh, uh, it's it's uh, it's a nice way to admit that we have been behind on building new products <laughs> <laughs> but i think you made a made a very good point and i will double click on that which was um that see if there is a product or something that you really want to go full on that you feel really excited about you where you feel like okay this is a product has uh, potential to kind of like you know put over all of our time and energy uh, but not all ideas are worth pursuing you know but yeah. there are a few ideas from that and my framework uh, like i've been i've been really bad at that like in any time if somebody suggests me a good book or somebody suggests me a good tool or like even like if i hear that about some of the ideas in general like my new marketing strategy or new content writing strategy uh, then i was like oh we should do that we should do that we should do this in multi color we should do that in multi multi dots um and more specifically when i would let's say i, I just got back from the world camp us uh, 2023 uh, i was there in august and i talked to a lot of different entrepreneurs the attended few sessions and i got a lot of new ideas you know and i was like wow there are so many great things you know i'm going to do this and that and one thing i realized that um that when i started to put all those ideas into my to do list right i just like you know so instead of acting on that i'll just leave it there for a one or two week if i still feel excited about two weeks later then that idea is something that has really impact otherwise it might just be a shiny object because like you know recently somebody say like all right yeah i want to but i like two weeks later when i will that's where i will actually see whether i still feel excited about it and okay. also it's important to see what are the other prior commitments that we already promises that we already made because that's where a lot of time uh, if you don't have anything on your pipeline or your to do list for the next few weeks or or month then yeah. it's okay you know to to start making picking yeah. trying ideas but if you already made commitments prior that you going to want to implement this strategy or you want to implement this tool then i'll leave those ideas right there right two weeks yeah. or three weeks later or month later i'll keep visiting them i'll keep going back okay. and see if i still feel excited excited yeah. about it yeah. and if i feel excited two weeks or three weeks later then yeah. i will start to find a team and create like you know a process to yeah. make some progress with that yeah i i agree with that completely it's 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 the two week or three week gap that you need to give and it's the prior commitments that you have you know mm. uh, both of them need to be uh balanced out so so yeah that's a good strategy yeah um so we saw a lot of entrepreneurs like you and me you know we um are working hard we are trying to grow the business keeping clients happy keeping a team happy and in this process um we also feel burned out you know sometimes we feel like we are lost sometimes i mean i'll i'll speak for myself that like you know yeah. there were a lot of different moment where i felt that yeah like uh, i'm not making a progress or i'm like doing too much i'm doing too less i start questioning the why am i doing it you know and you know one or other way um i have experienced uh like the the more i think the fancy word that nowadays popular is burnout right like you know one or other way i feel like you know i don't have the same level of fire or energy or excitement that i used to have in the beginning um 
So what do you do about that? Like, you know, have you felt that this way? If yes, then what kind of tools and techniques you use to keep yourself more motivated and, and healthy? Right. right. Uh, yeah, I think one of the important things is uh, to maintain a, a lifestyle that is also outside of the, you know, of the laptop or the computer. Uh, be it reading a book, uh, I don't do that, you know, but that is something I have in my wish list mm. or going for a walk or a cycle, uh, spending time with your kids. I believe they are the best, you know, stress busters. Uh, <laughs> so, so, so that is one, uh, and, uh, what else, you know, going to events, uh, and not necessarily just tech events, you know, sometimes going to a completely different event is also uh, good to get a, a perspective, which is, you know, completely different, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like you can get an idea, you know, when you go to, uh, to a place where you don't find your own people, you know, and you see, oh, achha, you know, even this can be done, you know, even this is how mm -hmm. they do it. When they face this problem, this is how they do it, you know. So maybe we can also do something like that. Uh, but apart from that, I believe uh, just just have a, a balanced uh, lifestyle. Eat, mm. you know, eat good. That's what I would say when I say uh, yeah. uh, good. I am not so much into the science of food, but mm. uh, I, you know, being a, a, a Jain. You know, mm. my our food habits are typically very, uh, uh, you can say scientific in that sense, mm. like mm. not consuming any, uh, uh, you know, uh, fish, meat, or, or those things, mm -hmm. uh, not consuming potatoes, onions, garlics. Right. Yeah. So that, uh, that has helped me keep my body at peace. Mm. And I believe that's the most important part if you want to be productive. Uh, so it's a combination of your eating uh, habits, man, be sane, you know, uh, like maintain good food habits, maintain a, a, a workout schedule, uh, you know, and sometimes it's okay if you, if you have to give more time to work for maybe a week, maybe 10 days, but I believe that should be enough, you know, then you have to get back to your normal uh, routine. Like you can't do it for forever, you know. Mm -hmm. like Don't make it a routine. Like you know, there is like a mission critical launch yeah. or opportunity yeah. or situation. You know, you it's yeah. okay to kind of like it can be in down. Sprints, mm -hmm. You know, it can be in sprints. As we we talk of doing a sprint, you know, maybe right. you can uh, you know you can work for long hours for a particular sprint, but mm -hmm. then that should, that should be all. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you know that's that's what I do typically. You know, what about you? Uh, I I know you read a lot of books. Uh, I, I have you know uh, seen uh, that on Facebook. Uh, does that help? Uh, you know how how does that help basically? Yeah. So for me, um, yeah, I, I I've been trying to, um, I call them uh, my recharge break. So that's one thing that I realized that. Uh, uh, I have this analogy, like, you know, where every time in the morning when I wake up, just like our phone, you know, it has like 100% battery in it, right? Mm. And then like everything I do, you know, like work, writing an email, making a decision, going to meetings, it all like opening different apps on my phone, you know? And if I use, let's say, a photo editing app, you know, then it will take more battery. But at some point I'll see, like even at this moment, my phone's battery is 50, 59%. Did I charge it in the morning and it's just an afternoon, right? So just kind of like being aware about it, that my energy, because one biggest thing I noticed that we don't realize that we feel like we have this power and energy and it's same, you know, and we just keep fighting with that. But yeah, I tried, started like maybe, um, yeah, just putting more uh, productive and recharging breaks. So I have walking is one thing. I do meditation sometimes in between the, the, the meetings. Okay. Napping is something that kind of helps me a lot. So I take a 10, 15 minute nap uh, right. every day in the afternoon. 
okay. uh, but yeah like just creating those uh time blocks where yeah. I'm, i'm completely disconnected so it's not a, uh, a resting so th- there is a difference between resting and recharging you know, oh. i mean i don't have much data on how much resting helps but mm. i try to find like uh, this i call it just like an iphone you know you need to plug it in mm. in order to to charge to get uh, put yeah. more battery in your phone uh, okay. similarly like reading books walk nap meditation mm-hmm. these are all like my plug in time you know that where i try to plug in my brain with more energy um yeah that that kind of uh, something that um works for me but i also want to add one more thing on food a uh, topic of food that you mentioned and earlier i did not have like that a uh, strong opinion on that but mm-hmm. in the last few years uh since i've been practicing more uh, yoga and meditation and i right. so have been been a part of the whole yoga and meditation and spiritual community you know just kind of mm. like trying to optimize uh, the, my sleep my food and all the different uh, areas yeah. of my life and um, regarding food i learned about that especially the ayurvedic science about the different types of food actually also either will increase your energy or it will dis- decrease your energy and just like tea you know there there is like herbal tea right then there is a there is a tea for uh, that helps you sleep better there is a tea that will help mm-hmm. you keep energetic there is a tea that will uh, you know keep you calm so just like that all the different kind of food that we eat it also contributes into different types of energy and mindset uh, mm-hmm. and which i i i i have noticed that and now there are also you know the lot of different research and science that supports that idea but uh, that is something that i'm also trying to incorporate more and um, how much eat how much we should eat and how we should eat those are the two things and what we should eat so these three things are something that we are playing a lot uh, i'm i'm trying to experiment with that a lot yeah that's that's good yeah how much how and what hmm yeah 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 and especially uh what you mentioned about like what you eat is 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 helpful but uh one thing i noticed that how you eat your food uh, mm. this morning um we had a meditation so i do uh a 30 to 45 minute meditation with our multi dot team member every okay. wednesday and uh, every wednesday morning so we had a modi meditation this morning on actually food you know so we talked about we did a meditation on food how we should conscious conscious mm-hmm. eating habits and stuff like that and it was really really very powerful in the just to kind of like understanding mm. the concept behind the food and it means like it's a it's a foreign object if yeah. you look at the fru- food right so all the fruits vegetables fish meat anything that we this that's like a foreign object that yeah. you are letting it enter into your body your body and if you're not mindful about it you know yeah. that it is becoming part of you right it's becoming yeah. your bone and flesh and your blood and if you don't don't pay attention to that then you, yeah then we yeah. are creating a trouble <laughs> we are inviting a trouble like it is like you know when we push a certain piece of code into our plugin and mm-hmm. we don't do it then it is bound to create some mess in the plugin down the line so mm-hmm. you know the same it's it's the same way you know that if you let yeah. if you're not mindful about that thing the food it is yeah you know it's going to bounce back at some point yeah no very well said and this all i think that you you really yeah and um, uh nail it with that thing like plugin and the analogy of the plugin yeah i think i love that yeah the great yeah so we shall i think that's a good place to land here yeah, you know eat um mindfully and consciously i think that's mm-hmm. that's a really good message uh, in order yeah. to uh to live a balanced and and peaceful life uh yeah. so now as we bring this to to the conclusion um yeah. one question i have is where people should go in order to learn more about you your business if you want to mm-hmm. mention some of the the resources that can be helpful right so uh, to learn more about the company and the business our website is tikisoftwares.com uh, you know we we only have that one entity so everything is is available over there 
and we have the same ids on uh, twitter and on instagram also uh, taiki softwares myself i am also active on twitter under the id of uh, to vishal ck that is t o vishal ck and yeah you know i am uh, you can reach out to me on linkedin on twitter on the direct messages uh, i am you know generally very uh, available and active on on these forums and uh, you can always email me as well you know uh, i am always reachable on the emails at vishal at taikisoftwares.com so so yeah you know uh, we you know that reminds me one last thing that we do uh, we send a monthly newsletter to all our customers and in that we have uh, kept a section of chat with vishal you know where we tell mm -hmm. our customers that if you have any uh, anything that you want to talk about or complain or you know or give feedback to just schedule a call over here and you know uh, that's where i get to talk to them mm -hmm. uh, so uh, so yeah you know uh, uh we have been pretty active in 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 sending the these newsletters and uh yeah i think that's like one more way to reach out you know to me uh that's for the customers of course uh but yeah i guess that's that's about all yeah no, that's awesome so, and we'll also put um uh, your website and some of the other resources that you mentioned uh, in our show notes so our listeners sure. uh, can easily find that out. Um, and one last question, Vishal, I have is: um, Is there anyone that comes to your mind that uh, should be um, be a good fit for the next guest for this part podcast? So you mean the next uh, who? If I can recommend someone, mm -hmm. uh, there is Nirav uh, Nirav Mehta yeah. from Store Apps. Uh, mm -hmm. There is Rahul Bansal. I'm not sure if they are, they have already been to the podcast or not. They have not been, but they are on my list. Yeah, I want to invite <laughs> them at some point. <laughs> okay, okay. You you could have Bhavesh uh, Radadia, Bhavesh okay. uh, from Design. He's not on my list yet, but I'll put it. Right. So yeah. Bhavesh uh, from Design Interactive, that's his okay. name, and he is actually responsible for a redesigned website that you see uh, hmm. currently. Uh, okay. so he could be, he could be a good fit uh, to talk about all things uh, WordPress themes UX and so on. Yeah, I think that's yeah. about it. You know, uh, yeah. Great. No, uh, those are uh, Nirav and Rahul is already on my list. I'll I put I'll put Bavish, and yeah. uh, we'll try to connect with him and uh, see if uh, can sure. something happen with them. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Great. Well, thank you so much, Vishal. Uh, it was really a great uh, talking to you, and you have been so generous with your time and sharing yeah. all the. With uh, no, I think uh, sorry to interrupt, but yeah, you know, it's the pleasure has been mine. Uh, it it was great to catch up uh, after so long, and uh, yeah, you know, I love talking to to fellow entrepreneurs, to people, and. Uh, because we share a bond going back 15 years it was you know uh, even more yeah. special so so thank you for having me of course of course and uh, yeah it was great to have you today and everything that you shared um, i'm sure will be very helpful for a lot of people who are already in business or want to become an entrepreneur and i think that's a, that's the one best advice that i have for everyone that learn from others you know like we already have done a lot of experiments and mistakes. Some things work, some things didn't work. So yeah, listen to the entrepreneurs, read their books, read their blogs, uh, right. however way you can kind of learn uh, from someone else's success and mistakes. I think that's the best way to grow. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. All right. So let's uh, wrap it up here. Uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, listening. Uh, keep learning, keep growing, and may the peace and growth be with you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.